offer for all of you and the anointing. Hallelujah. Let's pick up at verse 29, and we might as well for context, amen. Let's all stand for the reading of the Lord. Let's begin at verse 23 for context, amen. Amen. Take heed unto yourselves, lest ye forget the what? The covenant of the Lord your God, which he made with you, and make you a graven image or likeness of anything which the Lord thy God hath forbidden. He was saying, remember the second commandment, where we are not supposed to make any type of images, any pictures of Jesus, anything like that. He was like, remember my covenant. Remember there were 613 laws given to the children of Israel. Don't try and make folks go by some of them laws today when some of those laws were strictly for the children of Israel. But we know this. We're not to make any graven image of anything that's supposed to look like or what we call God or Jesus. Yeah. Verse 24. But the Lord thy God is what? A consuming fire, even a jealous God. Uh-huh. He won't share his glory. He won't share anything with, he won't share his honor. He won't share any, no flesh will glory in his presence. Verse 25. When thou shalt beget children and children's children, and ye shall have remained long in the land, and shall corrupt yourselves, and make a graven image or likeness of anything, and shall do evil in the sight of the Lord thy God, to provoke him to anger, why would you want to do this? He said, remember the covenant. Deuteronomy considered the book of remembrance. Verse 26, I call heaven and earth to witness against you this day that you shall soon utterly perish from off the land whereunto you go over Jordan to possess it. You shall not prolong your days upon it, but shall utterly be destroyed. Verse 27, and the Lord shall scatter you among the nations, and you shall be left few in number among the heathen, whether the Lord shall lead you. Verse 28. And there shall ye serve gods, the work of men, hands, wood, and stone, which neither see, nor hear, nor eat, nor smell. Those gods can't help you. Verse 29. But, if from thence, if thou shalt seek the Lord thy God, thou shalt find him. If thou seek him with all of your heart and what? And all of our soul. Let's pray. I want to talk to you today about seeking. Seeking. Father God, will you help us, O oh Lord? God, as you are expanding and authorizing our ministry to seek you, Lord, you're, you're calling us to a seek, to a deeper seek, Lord, a deeper searching the inward parts of us. For you said that the spirit of God takes man's spirit and turns it into a flashlight in Proverbs. And you use it to seek the inward parts of us. Lord, when you speak to us, God, you don't speak to our mind first. Our mind is enmity to God. Our mind can't even, isn't even interested in God. It must come to my spirit first. Uh, and then my spirit will tell my soul. Then the mind will get it. Uh, but my spirit must get it first, God. 
Lord God, help us to forever continually be seeking the the desires of our heart. Let you be the thing that we are seeking after. Seeking after those promises. Seeking after the covenants. Seeking after being in relationship with you. Strengthen thou me this morning. Strengthen me, God, Lord, that I would have a seek. Put a seek in my spirit. I want to seek in my spirit. Even when we're doing the music, you saw David. David was was instituted all the Davidic order of worship and he spent one billion dollars for 33 years seeking the Lord and putting the music around the tabernacle, putting the singers there, turning the preachers and the prophets and everybody into worshipers and the Levites and the gatekeepers and the porters. If you read it, you'll understand he put them all there so they could seek after you. His first day on the job as king. He said, you know what? We have not. Where is the ark of the covenant? He said, where is the ark? We have not sought it in the days of King Saul. But now David was the king. And the David said, the first thing we're going to do is get our attention off of everything and everybody. And we're going to put it on our primary duty to seek the Lord while he may be found. And Father, we ask you this. Will you bless the remaining time that we have together in Jesus' name? Why don't you put your hands together for the Lord? Amen. And let's go to Second Chronicles 14. Second Chronicles 14. Still talking about this seeking that the Lord is putting us on. Hallelujah. If someone asks you where you're at in your walk with God, you should always be ready to say, I'm on a seek. <laughs> I'm on, I'm on a deep seat. I'm not, I'm not where, where I really want to be yet. Amen. But I promise you, I'm not where I was. Amen. And I got this, this, this duty inside of me to forever seek his presence. And I'm, I'm looking to seek it a little more. Look at verse four of second Chronicles 14. We, for context, let's pull it up a little bit. We might as well begin at verse one. So. Abijah slept with his fathers and they buried him in the city of David and Asa his son reigned in his stead in his days. The land was quiet. What? Ten years. Meaning it wasn't war. There wasn't war. There was the enemy was there was a peace. There was a quiet. Verse two. And Asa did that which was good and right in the eyes of the Lord his God. For he took away the altars of the strange God. And tell somebody, and the strange men and women too. Hello? Yeah, because we, 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 we miss it sometimes. It's the, them strangers, they come trying to pop up in your life while you're on the middle of a seat. Talking about what about marriage and all this and all that. Well, yeah, you know, maybe if God, you know, has it for me to get married and all that, then maybe that'll be the thing. But but right now, in the middle of my seat, you're strange. For the Bible said that Solomon married many strange women along with his wife, Pharaoh. Why did the scriptures say mention his wife, Pharaoh's daughter? Well, because God had sanctioned the marriage of Pharaoh's daughter, his wife, but he didn't sanction the marriage of the 700 women, wives, and 300 girlfriends. Mm -mm. No, that's why the scripture calls them strange. That was something else he was coming up with. Those are, I like to call them strange strays. Yeah, they, they, they just stray. They, they, they don't have no foundation. They don't even really know where they're at. They don't know where they're going. They ain't on a seat. Because they was on a seat, they wouldn't be seeking me. Hello? When you find him or her, my pastor found his wife seeking the Lord. He was way up in the, in the, in the, on the balcony and she was already in Bible college with him and everything. But, but it was something about when he saw her walking the altar. Oh man. He said, boy, when he saw her walking that altar in prayer, it was like she was doing Kung Fu on the devil. Amen. It was like she was doing judo on him. And then, but that right there brought him something about that said to him, ooh. ooh. Amen. He, he got a ooh. <laughs> and it wasn't a ooh wee. 
It was like, it was a, oh, it was like a holy thing. Yeah. This holy thing. Holy. See, the ooh-wee is something from the flesh. But it was when it was a, oh my God, what's this woman? What's going on with this woman? She's on fire. She was on a seek. Yeah. She wasn't seeking him. And as you can see now, here it is, what, 30 years later? They got a phenomenal ministry, worldwide impact. But it was all that. It was like when he spotted her at the altar worshiping. Yeah. So. We're talking about what happened in Asa now as he did that which was right in the sight of the Lord in the eyes of the Lord his God. For he took away, first thing Asa did was that he took away the altar of the strange gods and the high places and he broke down the images and cut down the groves and deleted some phone numbers, hallelujah, and commanded Judah to seek the Lord. He's like, this is not an option. This is a, a duty. Tell somebody, it's my, it's my duty. He commanded Judah to seek the Lord God of their fathers and to do the law and the commandments. And he took away out of the cities of Judah the high places, the images, and the kingdom was what? Quiet. Quiet before him. But let me show you, this is what a seeker does. See, a seeker and someone that's been sent, we know what we need to take away to quiet things. Yeah. To quiet our spirit. We do. To quiet, oh, you know what? There's some stuff that just gotta go. Mm -hmm. And it ain't even bad. Tell somebody everything ain't bad. Everything ain't bad. But, but, but my spirit is ain't, it's not quiet yet. Hey. Trying to get my spirit quiet so that when I'm seeking the Lord, I'm hearing instruction. Trying to get my spirit quiet so I can hear the supernatural being pointed out to me. So I can see things that I never saw before because some, some high places was in the way. There was some groves that were in the way. There was some other images. Tell somebody, sometimes TV is just too many images. Hello? Yeah, even nice movies and good movies and old movies. And sometimes it's just too many images. I'll never forget and notice Asa. He was like, I got to take these images away because some stuff is interfering with my seeking. Yeah, right. <laughs> Hallelujah. And he commanded Judah. He said, seek the Lord. We can't seek the Lord and seek some other stuff at the same time. Uh huh. Verse, verse, verse five. And also he took away out of the cities of Judah, the high places, the images and the kingdom was quiet. And he built. Tell somebody when you're sent, when you, sit, you build. build. We gotta go in and build. Amen. That's why I'm praying and believing God that He'll, He'll, He'll bless us enough where we'll, when we come into our building, we're gonna be building. It may not be the building that we like when we first look at it, but when we get it, we're gonna start building on top of it. <laughs> we'll start building on the back of it. <laughs> because you see, Asa understood as a sent man. He said, and he built fences to, in Judah for the land had rest. And had no war in the land, had rest. And he had no war in those years because the Lord had what? Given rest. Come unto me. Matthew eleven twenty eight. All ye that labor, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you. Take what you know I'm anointed for. Take what you know I'm authorized to do. Take everything you need to learn about me. He said, and learn of me. I can't do that when something else is interfering with my seek. Learning of me is seeking me on another level. Yeah, yeah. Same with our music. When we're doing this music and we're praying and we're ministering and all of that, the Lord told David when he instituted the Davidic order of worship, remember we read it the other day in First Chronicles 13, he said they did it with all of their might. He said they did it with all, y'all remember he did it with all their might. We're not just singing a few songs and playing a few, no, we're doing this. That means make sure our spirit is in it. We may not hit the perfect note. We may not always have that. That's not what we're looking for. Amen. We're looking for is, are we doing it out of a pure love for the Lord and a pure worship? Is it a part of my seeking? Remember, whoever you are, whenever you minister, that thing is attached to what you're giving out. Amen. And that's how you could determine if yokes will break. Or if they're sent or not, because there's a lot of folks can get up there. We just read in Jeremiah 14, 14, and Jeremiah said, I did not send them. Ah. 
they're preaching, they're teaching, they're prophesying. He said, but they're lies because I did not send them. Wow. So there is a distinction of sent ones and ones that he didn't send. Hallelujah. Some of that stuff is high places. It's been lifted up high. And folks is looking over there too. And he's like, you know what? You got to quiet your spirit. Take down that old, that high stuff. That's, it looks high and mighty. It looks like it's all this and all that. But you'll never be able to get to what God wants to do with you. Because that stuff is interfering with your seeking. Hallelujah. First Chronicles 13 and 8. Remember David's first day on the job of the king. Being the king. He put the whole nation on a seat like Asa did. My yeah, God. started from the beginning, sister. David, oh, start from one. Yes. And David. Mm -hmm. Got the microphone right here. Let's do it. Hallelujah. And David consulted mm -hmm. with the captains of thousands and hundreds and with every leader. My God. Stop. May I speak in the Holy Ghost? This is important. Uh, uh, this is something in the Holy Ghost I'm getting. All right. Can you say, I'm a captain? I'm a captain. Say what? I'm a captain. You're a captain. The, yeah, he consulted with his captains. And who else? A thousands and hundreds and with every leader. Uh, with every say, leader. I'm a leader. I'm a leader. And I can lead leaders. And I can lead leaders. Not all leaders can lead leaders. Amen. Amen. And some folk ministry will never go past a certain place, let's just whatever, whatever, because God didn't authorize them to lead leaders. Okay. But when, depending on the type of David that God has put in your life, and how they see you. They see you. We see you as captains. We see you as leaders, my God. We see you as people that should be able to go when we can't get on the airplane. And we mentioned this many times before. I was counting all the missionary missions that we have gone on. And we have gone on 12 overseas missions in three years with on our own dime we have never taken no offerings from people and all that stuff then have to pay for our fuel and pay for our this and that no we went on our own dime there's all kinds of stories out there but sometimes them stories out there because god didn't send them but the sent ones doesn't matter what it's gonna cost me doesn't matter what I got to do to get it done. Yeah. The Lord will put this thing inside of my spirit. I'm going to do it. Watch what David did on his first day in office. And we read this the other day, but I, I want it on the recording because somebody around the world is going to hear it. Yeah. And David said unto all the congregation of Israel, if it seems good unto you and that it be of the Lord or God, let us send abroad unto our brethren everywhere that are left in all the land of Israel. Hold it. So David, first day on the job, he said, okay, now, okay, all right, I'm the king now. We got all this stuff. But he's like, so now we need to make some changes. There's like any new print. President, any new politician, any new leader of a corporation or a company, anybody gets in the office, you got to see where you've been, where, where we've been losing money. We got to see where we've been wasting. We got to see where we've been off. And this is what David's role was. Remember, he was a leader out there with those sheep, yeah. out there with in the mountains with the presence of God, yeah. made him a leader that could lead God, leaders. God, 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 God. David was an expert at seeking the Lord. And so when he came back, he had no experience. He had no experience in leading a nation. His All his experience was in seeking the Lord while he may be found. That's where he was an expert at. He was an expert at that. And so he went to the people and he was like, I got to pass on to you the skills that I got. He said, tell me what do y'all think about this? Rhetorically speaking, he said, do y'all think it's a good idea that we seek after the Lord with all of our might? Do you think it's a good idea that we come together and worship the Lord and make him the center? Not our nation. Not that we're Jewish. Not that we want all these wars. Not that we've done this and that. And not that, you know, we're from Moses and we're from Abraham and we're from Jacob and we're from Isaac. He was like, no, no, forget all that. We're going back to Yahweh. We're going back to Yahshua. We're going back to putting Jesus at the center of everything. And that's what David was instituting. 
right here, the Davidic order of worship. Let's go. And with them also to the priests and Levites, which are in their cities and suburbs, that they may gather themselves unto us. Hold it. They were all the way in Egypt. They were created and instituted under the tabernacle of Moses to be created to handle the things of God. The atmosphere to set it, to keep the tabernacle under the tabernacle of Moses and all this. And now by the time David comes in office, the whole nation and backslid. Too many images, too many high places that have gotten away from the seek, having that seek in their spirit, the duty of it. Let's go. And let us bring again the ark of our God to us, for we inquired not at it in the days of Saul. <laughs> He was like, in, in the sky I'm replacing. We stop seeking. Uh -huh. Seek means to inquire. Yeah. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We will go into a different level and a place of seeking. Not just good church. Not just with a bunch of swinging from the chandeliers. And I know how to do that. And I love that too. But he's talking about a deep seek. This is what he's talking about. A deep seek. That's the message. That's the name of the message. A deep seek. I'm talking about, they're, they're going to look at you and they're going to wonder, where are you from? You can't just be, you just can't be a regular Christian because regular Christians don't, don't deep seek anymore. Regular Christians do the song, get three songs, hear from Deacon so-and-so, Elder, what's his name? Two or three, uh, uh, announcements, this, that, and the other, and then we're going to hit this church service. You're going to get the sermon. Don't worry. You're going to get the sermon. And then everybody is gone. One man said, if you watch the parking lot of a church, you'll see the racism. He's like, could the white people go that way? The Spanish people go that way? The black people go that way? And the Asian people go that way? Because church is over. See that? It's powerful. And, and he's right. It's changing though now because one of the purposes for the Davidic order of worship is Acts 15, 16, 17. Remember, we read that the other day. But I want you to finish this piece and we'll go there. And all the congregation said that they would do so for the thing was right in the eyes of all the people. The whole congregation of Israel, the whole church, everybody said, you know what, let's put our church back on what's important. The seeking of the Lord's presence. We want to see signs, wonders, and miracles take off in here. So that when we leave here, signs, wonders, and miracles will take off wherever we go. Amen. He said, these signs shall follow them that believe. Mark 16, 16. They shall be baptized. They shall uh, uh, speak in new tongues and, and all these other signs and wonders. But watch what else happens here before we go to Acts 15. So David gathered all Israel together. From Shihar, Egypt, even unto the entering of Hemath, to bring the ark of God from Persia, Jerusalem. Mm. And David went up, and all Israel, to Bela, that is the Kura, Jerusalem, which belongeth to Judah, to bring up thence the ark of God, the Lord, that dwelleth between the cherubim, whose name is called on it. Oh, my God. Do you realize that that ark was in a field? The ark was way off somewhere. They done forgot about it. They done forgot about worshiping the presence of the Lord. They didn't want the presence. The presence. He's like, what? You're supposed to be seeking when you get into the presence. When we get into the presence, be it, be it prayer, be it worship music, be it singing and praising and all that, we should be in there seeking. I'm singing the song, but I'm seeking. I'm exhorting. I'm calling on the name of the Lord, but I'm also I'm seeking. I'm in a deep seek, not sleep. Yeah. Hallelujah. Yeah. I'm in a deep seek, not sleep. Come on, church. Come on, Christianity. The Lord is calling us back to a deep seek, Thank you, Father. not a deep sleep. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. Not even good church. Not even good anything that can happen in there. And a lot of stuff is good, but we better make sure that we're in a deep seek. Yeah. Well, we can seek him while he may be found. Keep going till he tell them to do something with all their might. And they carried the ark of God in a new cart out of the house of Ebonah, Ebonada, and Uzzah, and Ayo. And they and played before God with what? All oh, their man. might. They, that sounded like it was pretty deep to me. Yeah. They went in on a deep worship. With, <laughs> they was praying. They were playing them instruments. And remember, this was 24 hours a day, wow. seven days a week, you, for Father. 33 years, wow. $1 billion. 
That's what it costs for David to pay for a 24 hour seeking for 33 years to house all those people, to pay them so they didn't have to work to take care of them and their families. He didn't just take care of the musicians and the singers. He had to give them enough to take care of their whole family. <laughs> Let's go. And David and all Israel played before God with all their might and with singing and with heart. And, and even the king. Tell somebody, the pastor got to go deep too. Yeah. Pastor, you got to go deep too. Deeper. You got to go deeper. 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 You can't let the people walk with you, pastor, all the time. The Bible sh sh shares that. First, Moses walked with the people. But then he had to get deeper. And he had to go ahead of the people. And then the people all of a sudden was like, where is Moses? I don't know, but I hope he's going deep. I don't know where he at per se. <laughs> I can't tell you where he at exactly. I don't know where they at right now, but I'm just going to assume they're going deep. Hello? We're going deep. Keep going. And with psalteries, and with timbrels, and with cymbals, and with trumpets. Uh, 105. Let's go to Psalms 105. Psalms 105. In Jesus' name. Psalms 105. I'm going to read it for you. Psalms 105. Looking at verse 4. Hallelujah. Well, if you start off in verse one, <laughs> let's do it that way. Oh, give thanks unto the Lord. Yeah. Call upon his name and make known his deeds yeah. among the people. Sing unto him what? Yeah. Psalms unto him. Talk ye of all of his miracles and wonderful works. Glory ye in his holy name. Let's talk about how holy he is. Let's be impacted about how holy he is. Let's give credit to how separated and unique can, and in a category all by himself, he is. Let the heart of them rejoice that seek the Lord. Yes. My God. And that word for seek is bakash. In Hebrew, it's bakash. Oh, this word is very powerful. It, uh -huh. it means to search out. To search out. So when we're seeking, we're searching out something we don't know about God. Baka is B A W K A S H. It's Baka. Sometimes it's pronounced as Bakesh. Bakesh, depending on the phonetic. Bakesh. Bakesh. And it's defined as to seek out yeah. by any method, hey. specifically in worship and prayer. <laughs> so while we're playing, we're not playing to get likes and reviews while we're singing. We're not doing it to get likes and reviews. We're not doing it to get people to connect to our page and all that. We're doing it to go deep. We're doing it because of Bakesh. We're seeking out. And this is, tells them it's just one of the methods. It's more than just one method in seeking the Lord. In Hebrew, it's Bakesh. Specifically means to seek him out by any method. Any method. You know what? I'm going to go walk by the ocean because I'm seeking the Lord. I'm going to go and do one of my hobbies because I'm seeking the Lord. I'm going to go and just sit alone by myself and have a cup of coffee because I'm seeking the Lord. Uh -huh. He's talking about any method, any method necessary, but especially prayer and worship. By implications to strive after. He's saying meaning when we're on the seat, it means I'm striving for something. I'm trying to touch God more. I'm trying to tap into him more. This is what it means. It means I'm striving. You ever seen somebody striving after something? You know, they're, they're chasing after it. They're, they're battling other folks so that other people don't, don't let get in first. You ever see two cars trying to enter in an arm wrap and, and one car is like trying to beat the other car? That's striving. They, though they driving, they're striving. They're trying to beat the other car. And that's what the Lord is saying. Well, he said, when he said, I need you to seek me, try and beat your flesh. <laughs> Tell your flesh, get back. I'm going to seek after the Lord like I never have before. It also means to ask. It also means to beg. It also means to desire. It also means to inquire. It also means to get some stuff we ain't got. We haven't put it on a seek. We haven't put ourselves on a seek. 
When you put yourself on a seek, then you'll reach. Hallelujah. Seeking after something. It also means to, to make an inquisition. It means to go through a, a procedure. It means to procure. It means to purchase it. Make a request. It means to seek. You'll find that word seek, salt, begging, inquisition, all of that. You'll find it. It's used in scriptures by Kesh 189 times. 189 times. He says, see me while I may be found. Did we come to verse 5 of 105? It was 4. Seek the Lord. And his what? Strength. And his strength. Seek his face forevermore. So when we're seeking the Lord, we're saying, God, strengthen me where I can't strengthen myself. Strengthen me in my mind, in my money, in my spirit. And my logistics and where I'm going and what it is that you want me to do, how you want me to do it. Uh, let's go to Isaiah 55 and 6. Isaiah 55 and 6. Hallelujah. We're still on a seek right now. Is that all right? Isaiah 55, picking up at verse 6. Hallelujah. Isaiah 55, take a look at verse 6. <laughs> and it says it like this. Seek ye the Lord while he what? Why he may be found. If you don't know what that means, call upon him while he's near. But this means to do something that makes him draw near. This means to do something that make him draw near. Go to Jeremiah 29, 13. Hallelujah. We're just going to take a look at a few. May not be able to finish them all, but 29, 13. We know Jeremiah 29, 11, right? I know the thoughts that I have for you. Yeah. But look at verse 13. Yeah. And ye shall seek me and find me. When? When you shall search for me with all of your heart. Leave room for nothing else. Leave room for nothing else. Talking about seek me past your career. Yeah. Seek me past your good looks. Wow. Seek me past your talents, your ability, your preaching ability, your teaching, whatever it is that you know how to do, whatever it is that you good at. He's like, and you want to get better at it? He said, you want to get better at seeking me over that. That's where we're going. And it's my prayer and I believe and I'm going to proclaim that when we're out ministering in music, as the Lord is now to starting to develop in that, develop us in that area. And he had it for us a long time ago. That it's going to cause people to want to seek. It's going to cause people that they're going to feel something in their spirit. That's like something's drawing me. Something is pulling me. Something is, is wanting me to come closer to this thing. Go to Hosea 10, 12. One of my favorite ones is very powerful. Look at Hosea 10, 12. The Lord is really speaking right here. Look at verse 12. My God. Sow to yourselves in righteousness, reap in mercy, break up the fallow ground, talking about of your heart, for it is time to seek the Lord till he comes and what? Rain down righteousness upon you. I'm looking for the rain. Uh. Everybody get that? I'm looking for the rain. Hallelujah. No wonder seek ye first the kingdom of God and all of it righteousness this is what they're alluding to here because when we seek him how he wants he automatically rains down righteous you catch that so no wonder it says seek ye first matthew 6 33 and most people know that scripture but they don't know hosea 10 12 because it's hosea 10 12 that helps us to understand matthew 6 33 and the reason he said, seek him and his righteousness. So we're not just seeking him for stuff. Right. We're seeking him for character. Yeah. Yeah. Hello. We're seeking him so that we could be a man and woman of honor. A man and woman that is of a, of a, of a proper character and continence. Amen. And he was like, then all these other things, seek him first, kingdom of God, and all of his righteousness. Why all of his righteousness? Because right here it tells us in 6.12, it says, when you break up the fallow ground, the scripture talks about of your heart, for at times to seek the Lord till he come with the rain, the rain of righteousness. Now, let me just teach a little bit on this fallow ground, because we think fallow ground is ground that's hard it is it is ground that's hard but it used to be soft that's why it's called fallow ground it dried up 
This is important because if you catch now what he's saying, he's talking in the tense of someone whose heart used to be real sensitive to the Lord. They used to be like, man, I just, I want, I want to go on a seat. I want to go after the Lord a certain way and this and that. But, but something happened in life. These images, these, these high places, uh, these strange folks, these strange things start coming in and my heart got dry. So that's why it's called fallow ground. If you ever look at mud, soil, after when the water, it goes to a dry place, that ground is hard, huh? <laughs> it's like cement, but you could tell water used to be there. That's called fallow ground. And so that's what he was saying. <laughs> Break up your, tell somebody, my fallow ground. For it is time to seek the Lord till he come. And when he come, He's going to rain down that righteousness on me. And I told you what that righteousness there is. Sadiq. Sadiq. My God. That means it's someone that carved out a path for me to go in. And I got off the path. But it's like if I would get back on it, everything else I've been looking for is on that path. Uh oh. Hello. Seek ye first the kingdom of God and all of its righteousness and all these other things will be added. Well, it will be because it's a path carved out for you and I. You're a chosen people, a royal priesthood, a holy group. Are you, you're, you, there's something on your path that as soon as you get to where you're supposed to be, righteousness is going to take you there. Tell somebody righteousness is, is, is something else. <laughs> righteousness is going to lead me to this thing. And when I get there, of course, I'm going to pass by all these other temptations. You're going to pass by all these other things. But he said, no, he said, when these other things start calling you, go back to seeking. <laughs> go back to seeking. Be like, you know what? Uh, uh There's something else I'm looking for over there. But every time I kind of get close to it, this other stuff keep calling me. So I got to go back to keep seeking my primary mission. And that is to be conformed in the image of Jesus. Not to be a great preacher. Not to be a great singer. Not to be a great evangelist. Not to be a powerful pastor. Not to be any of that and all that stuff. All that stuff is last on the list. Yes, yes, yes. Romans eight twenty eight and 29 confirms that. It's to be conformed into the image of Jesus. That means whatever happens in my life, whether I agree with it or not, if I lost one leg, then... <laughs> That was to help me eventually look more like Jesus with one leg. If I lost my car, my house, my wife, if whatever you have lost, all things work together for the good. Wasn't good. Did it happen? And you probably had something to do with why it happened. Amen. But what it's saying is it, what's going to happen from now on or after it happens is what it's saying. It should make me now want to see Kasakayaba. <laughs> It should make me now want to seek like never before. Uh-huh. Oh, Jesus. Oh, we're going. We got a little bit more to go. Go to Amos 5 and 4, Zephaniah 2 and 3. Zephaniah 2 and 3. Let's go to Amos 5 and 4. Is it okay if I take a little more time? 5 and 4. We're not in the cute ministry business. We're in a very bloody business. <laughs> when Solomon did sacrifice and offering, he brought thousands of sheep. It was bloody. We make ministry look like it's all cute today. It ain't cute. It's a bloody business. <laughs> Folks are going to be dying at that altar. Your flesh got to die at the altar. My sins got to get covered under that blood. I, all this stuff got to happen at the altar. It's a bloody altar. We got folks thinking this, this ministry is cute. It's not. It's very bloody. Hallelujah. It's very bloody. Maybe you ain't had no blood lately. <laughs> Maybe you ain't had to apply something to. I doubt it. I'm sure you got something you need to apply that blood to. Amen. Amen. All right, let's go. Somebody give me that Amos 5 and 4. I'm going to pick it up here. For thus said the Lord unto the house of Israel, seek ye me, and then you shall live. But seek not Bethel. Nor enter into Gilgal and pass not to Beersheba. For Gilgal shall surely go into captivity and Bethel shall come to not. Uh-oh. Are you hearing what he's teaching right there? We can't make the church more important, Bethel. He said, because it may come to not. <laughs> the doors might close. The building might move. The pastor might fall off. He's like, don't put the focus on that. 
He said, but seek ye me and you shall live. But seek not Bethel. <laughs> he, the scripture just told us. Don't seek Bethel. Even when you're in Bethel, don't seek Bethel. Because <laughs> you might even be in the wrong church. Hello? There's something in Revelation in that right there. The Bible said God places people in the body according to how it pleased him. Yeah. A lot of stuff went wrong there because he didn't place you there. You placed you there. And then even if he placed you there, you could wind up in trouble because you in there, you ain't seeking him. You're seeking marriage. You're seeking a position. You're seeking the microphone. You're seeking how they might can use your gifts. I remember I was listening to one lady. She's like, yeah, I don't really want to go to that church no more. I want to go somewhere where they, uh, where they recognize my gifts. Mm. You something else. <laughs> I can tell you ain't on a seek because if you're on a seek, if you're on a, a true seek, even if you don't belong there, seek God while you're there. Amen. <laughs> and then he will move you. He will move the situation. He will adjust it. Yeah. He'll make it work if you will seek him. Yeah. My God. Yeah. He said, don't you seek Bethel. Better watch out for Gilgal. All of that stuff could look like he said, nor enter into Gilgal. What is he talking about when he said, nor enter into Gilgal? Talking about these popular places where people just say, you know what? Just come on over here with us. Just come on over here with us. <laughs> just come on over here. It may not even be a church, but, but they just got you over in Gilgal. Yeah. Amen. And you're supposed to be somewhere seeking. Right, right. Yes. Hello? Yes, amen. Oh, Jesus. Let's go a little further. Somebody give me Zephaniah. Zephaniah, please. Uh huh. Seek ye the Lord, all ye meek of the earth, which have wrought his judgment. Seek righteousness, seek meekness. It may be ye shall be hid in the day of the Lord's anger. Ah! Uh, seek meekness? What does it mean to seek meekness? Remember, Moses was meek, but he wasn't weak. Amen. So when he was saying seek meekness, a lot of these words we got to always define. Remember, meek, he's talking about being 100% dependent on God. It's different from even humility, man. Humility is dependent on God. But meek has to do with you having power, but you keep it disciplined and under control. Tell somebody, I got to keep this power I walk in. Under control. <laughs> under control because that power can get you in trouble too amen you better ask king uzziah in the year king uzziah died isaiah said i saw the lord high and lifted up isaiah six he said and his glory filled the temple and he saw adonai right there he saw the lord's dominion but remember, King Uzziah was so anointed and so gifted that he reigned 39 years or 50 years, something like that. And he did so many great things for the children of Israel. And he was so gifted and anointed, but he forgot meekness. And after all those years of doing everything, he died a leper. He died a leper because one day he said, well, you know what? I was good at winning wars. I was good at knocking down walls. I was good at instituting all these things. The kingdom is prospering. I did everything. I've done it right. He just started getting into himself. He started moving away from meekness. And he decided to go in the temple like Saul and offer a sacrifice. Well, he wasn't anointed to do that. Remember, I talked about that anointing. It means when you're anointed, you're anointed for that, to do that. You can't fail. But as the Bible says, as soon as King Uzziah went in there to offer up sacrifices in there, <laughs> the Bible says, and the priest withstood him. They came in there and was like, you ain't a priest. <laughs> We're the ones in here seeking this. We're the ones in here seeking the Lord's presence. This is our job, our assignment. King Uzziah, I get it. I, I get what you're saying. And I, I understand you've done all these things. We have never lived better. But now you're crossing over the line of meekness. And when he went in there and tried to do it, he was struck with leprosy on his forehead. And the Bible tells us he was banished out of the kingdom. His son had to wind up being the king and they had, he had to live in the house. He still was in the kingdom, but he had to live in a house. He couldn't come out anymore. This, this king that was more popular than all the other kings except David, this guy had to wind up on house arrest for the rest of his life. And then when they buried him, they wouldn't even bury him in the cemetery of the kings. They had to bury him next to it. Do you see what, what that pride will get us? That, that pride, remember, a haughty spirit 
comes before a fall. Pride and a haughty spirit come before a fall. And he should have been seeking the Lord prior to that. We know Matthew 6, 33. But let's go to Luke 10. Would it be all right? Luke 10, 11, 10. Let's go to Luke 11, 10. I'm just slowing it down here a little bit because I want to get all of this out so I don't have to re-preach it. Amen. 11, 10. And I'll read it. Hallelujah. For everyone that asketh, receiveth, Jesus said. Now, may I teach right here on this statement? Sometimes you run into people and they say, you know what? I tried Jesus and it didn't work. Well, you know they're lying because if you try Jesus, you never stop asking <laughs> because it's plural. For everyone that asketh, da, 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 da. that's a continuation statement. Everyone that continues to ask, you don't come off it. It said, if you continue to seek, that's what it means. And asking, he said, you will receive it. <laughs> You'll keep getting stuff if you keep asking. Uh -huh. So it's impossible that you tried Jesus because as soon as you say it didn't work, then that means you stop. You stop asking, you stop seeking, you stop knocking, you stop believing, you stop looking. If I were you, I would come over where I'm at because they teach us differently over here. Uh -huh. ha. Hi, look. We keep asking, we keep knocking, we keep seeking, and we keep receiving. Yes. All right, let's go. And he that seeketh, seeketh us out. Uh -huh. And he that seeketh. To worship, to worship, to he that keep worshiping, uh huh, against doubt, against anything, he that keeps inquiring, he, he that keeps looking for the answer, find it. Isn't that what it said? Yes, yes. <laughs> and to him that knocketh, knocketh, the, the, the continuation, never stop knocking. It shall be open. If it, if it haven't opened yet, then praise God it haven't opened yet. Tell somebody, praise God. Praise God. Because what might be on the other side of that door, <laughs> you may not be ready for that. You may not even want it. You may not even want it. Amen? Amen. Hallelujah. But I want to give you a few other things as he's talking about. Verse 11. And if a son shall ask bread of any of you, this is a father. Will he give him a stone? Or if he ask a fish, will he for a fish give him a serpent? Or he shall ask an egg. Will he offer him a scorpion? My God. If you then being evil know how to give good gifts unto your children, how much more shall your heavenly father give the Holy Spirit to them who seek him. Yes, yes, oh God. Yes, oh God. All right, let's go. I'm going to give you one final scripture. Second Chronicles 26, 5. And we're going to pray. Hallelujah. We're going to lift up. Yahshua, he is my Lord. He is my Lord. He is my King. We bless his holy name. Second Chronicles. I want you to look at 26.5. My God. Mm-hmm. Watch what it says. And he sought God in the days of Zechariah. And he sought God in the days of Zechariah, who had understanding and vision. Zechariah had understanding and vision because he was seeking God in the visions of God. As long as he what? Sought the Lord. God made him prosper. Where is our prospering at? <laughs> our prospering is in seeking the Lord. Hallelujah. You know, we just want to end in prayer right here. Hallelujah. And we're going to just pray and we're going to talk to the Lord.